I never thought I'd see the day, but I hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I wanted to do something fun. I wanted to do something about my workflow, the terminal I'm in daily, what you're looking at right now. So this is my 1,000 subscriber special, my dev workflow. You're gonna see how I work, the way that I get into files, edit stuff, and get stuff done on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for subscribing. Here we go. So as you can probably tell, I've been using Pop OS. And I'd surprise you, but I'm a little new to Linux actually. And I started getting into it because I was just like really sick of how slow my work MacBook was. And I was just like, I'm gonna use my gaming PC and start getting into Linux actually. And I've been really impressed with my workflow and how fast it's been. So this is 2010, Pop OS 2010. And I've really enjoyed it, it's been really great. Now, Pop OS 2010 comes with the GNOME window manager, as you can see here. And it really feels like it's Mac OS Lite. Like this right here feels like Mac OS. The uh, search bar feels like Mac OS. And honestly, coming from Mac, it's been really nice. And I really haven't had any interruption as far as managing windows inside the operating system. So definitely recommend it. Uh, I've wanted to try something like i3 or maybe a different window manager at some point, which I know is possible with uh, a Linux distribution like Pop OS. You would just install a different window manager. But yeah, I might try a different distribution. We'll see. Uh, really been enjoying this though. Uh, but honestly, I don't really care about my window manager that much. I really mostly care about this guy, the terminal. And the first layer of the terminal I have here is something called Alacrity. And this is my emulator. This is what you're actually seeing here. This is written in Rust. It's a GPU accelerated terminal. So it's like really fast and yeah, I've really enjoyed using it. It's missing some of the like more like niche nuance features of something like the GNOME terminal. Like I can't put a background image on this. I can make it transparent like you're seeing, but I can't really, you know, add like a meme or something behind there like I've seen some people do. I don't really care. I'm more concerned with efficiency, speed, getting stuff done so fast. So this is what I use. This is the first layer I have here in my terminal. Next up, I'm using Tmux. And this is Tmux. Can I get a version? Ah, there we go, Tmux 3. And I've really been enjoying using Tmux. As you can see down here, I have all kinds of panes open and windows. And what I love about Tmux is how fast it is to do stuff like this. Boom, there's another terminal and I can start switching between these two. Easy, you know, echo something. That happens, switch up here, do something else. I could be having multiple things running. Let's say I'm done with this guy, exit, boom, I still have this open. Tmux is one of those things that just has like 10 x my productivity. I, again, as you can see, I have just a number of these windows going and each of them is sort of like a different little area of my brain. Sometimes I'll name these down here actually, uh, which you can do in Tmux. You can also have totally separate windows instead of the tabs. I'm sure I'm going to get somebody in here telling me I'm using Tmux wrong. I don't care. It works for me right now. I'm always learning about it and trying to get better at these tools. So you might be asking yourself, how did I get this fancy status bar down here for Tmux? And I've been a bit lazy. I haven't created a custom configuration for myself. I've just been using something called Oh My Tmux. And what Oh My Tmux is, which it might sound familiar to you, which it's sort of an offshoot of Oh My Z Shell. It's a composable, uh, configurable configuration for Tmux. It's really simple. It basically just has a single configuration file. So .tmux and it's this conf local. And it populates just a bunch of this stuff in here, tells you about it, what it is. Super easy to use, love it. Oh My Tmux. So that's what gives me this status bar and much of my configuration inside of Tmux itself. And as I said, what shell do I use? Z shell. And on top of that is Oh My Z shell, which I made a whole video about Z shell and Oh My Z shell. It's really easy to configure. It's very composable. You can get plugins into it. You can write your own scripts into it. Z shell is great. 
I really, really like Z-Shell. So let's get into my actual workflow workflow. So let's go into a project, let's go into my workspace, Cobra. We're gonna go in here. Cobra is a project that I've worked on in the past and it's a mostly Go project. So I've been using in the terminal, the next layer in uh, NeoVim. NeoVim has been great. So I alias Vim to NeoVim, just so that I'm not accidentally getting into Vim. If you didn't know, they're a little different. They have different configuration styles, but for all intents and purposes, they're basically the same thing. So I use a Vim, let's get in here. Now, this is a dev release of NVim, but you can use whatever you want. The biggest thing is the plugins that you're gonna be using. So one of my biggest ones I use is the Nerd Tree. So I can come over here, start looking at stuff. I can go into a file. Great, we're doing stuff. Another one of the biggest plugins I use is FZF, which is a fuzzy file finder. And I have that aliased here. So if I need to find a file, like, oh, I need the args file, Oh look, there's both of them. And I get a really quick preview of what that file is, what it does. And let me tell you, this thing is so fast. FZF is amazing. I need to get into this file. Oh, let's get into a different one. Cobra something, Cobra Go, there it is. You just get the feeling and you start moving around so quickly. Now let's say that you're not looking for a file name specifically, but instead you're looking for a specific string inside of a file. I use the AG plugin as well, which I believe comes bundled in with the FCF plugin. Anyways, so that's AG, and I can start looking for stuff like args not available or something, and it's just kind of a fuzzy string search inside of the files itself. So let's say that I was looking for this right here exactly. I could AG enable command sorting or something, and there it is. It jumps me right to that line, and I could start making changes. Now, since I'm working in Go, you have, may have noticed that a lot of these lines are collapsed and I can easily go in there. Go in here, go in here, easy. Now, what this is being provided by is the Vim Go plugin. So th this thing is amazing. The Vim Go plugin is so incredible. If I go and just start looking at all the things that it provides, it's, it's crazy. It's got so much that it can do debugging, building, testing, automated linting, importing, basically anything you would need to work in Go in Vim. Now, for a long time, I was using IntelliJ's GoLand, which is a really good editor and a fully integrated IDE, but it just like, it's so freaking slow. Like just to get into a project would take like 10, 15 minutes. Let's say I needed to edit something here. You know, I come in here, do a thing, exit out, and then fly over to a different project. Let's go over to this thing. Here we are, Vim, and I'm in. Like, it's so fast how stuff just starts moving so quickly. If you wanted to work in some kind of multi-project thing, I think it would be more difficult inside of a large integrated development environment. I've, I've been there before where I've had like four or five IntelliJ windows open, and it's just like, it, it just, the indexing, it just bogs you down. It's so slow. This project right here is something I made and it's in TypeScript with node modules. And it just is surprising to me how fast the code completion is and just on the command line, how quick it is to actually work. So let's say that I made some changes with Vim. I would obviously use Git to make those changes and push them up to whatever repository I was working in. And then at my current job, I'm working sort of in a PR, open source maintainer sort of role. So I might create a PR, get it reviewed by some of the other maintainers or by the community, and then boom, it'll get merged and that's my contributions. And that's like it, that's like my whole dev workflow. I also obviously use a web browser. I'm not gonna lie, I try to stay away from it as much as possible because I'll get distracted and it's just like, I could be on Slack forever just like looking at messages or getting pinged. So oftentimes I'll have tabs open and these tabs will be Slack or you know some Stack Overflow thing or something. And it's really nice in GNOME where it'll actually tile these automatically for you. This is a typical workflow that I will be in where I'll have something like, you know, GitHub over here or whatever, looking at stuff. And then my terminal on this side with my editor or whatever else going on. But you know, that's pretty much it. My terminal, 
and my web browser, which I try to stay away from, honestly. But the most productive place that I live is inside of the terminal here, doing stuff super snappy. And I don't think this is like a difficult workflow to learn. I think it's a intuitive workflow with the terminal, tmux, vim. And once you start to learn some of the key bindings slowly, you really start to pick up speed quickly. So again, my super simple workflow. I wanna thank everybody for the 1K subs. It's been a lot of fun. I'm gonna start trying to make more regular videos, more regular uploads, stuff like this, stuff actually about engineering and of actual value to you. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you wanna see. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace, take care.